you gorgeous individuals, it's Kav here, and today I'm here with the incredible Sandhya Medin. <laughs> For the second time, I have already interviewed her once on my channel, so you all should go check that out. But today, she's here for the celebration of the release of her third book, There's Something About Sweetie. That's honestly wild to me, because I feel like it was just yesterday when I found out about One Dimple Met Rushy. I know. And I'm like, wait, there's, there's, a, there's three? What's happening? Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. They have multiplied. But it's crazy in the best way because her books are incredible and you all should definitely go read them. Mm -hmm. But today we are going to be talking a little bit more about There's Something About Sweetie than the other two because I have talked about them a lot on my channel and we discussed them last year together. Yes, Yes, in the did. interview. So we're going to be focusing a bit more on that one but I do have a couple overarching questions. This is going to be as spoiler free as possible because I need you all to get all hyped up and then go pick up the book yourself. <laughs> so you don't have to have read the book yet you can just sit back and listen and then by the end of this hopefully you'll really really want to pick it up yes so i guess the first thing should be just the most basic give us your pitch for your sweetie's book oh wow <laughs> you did not tell me that was coming okay <laughs> like that's not the most basic <laughs> no that's far from basic but okay there's something about sweetie is about a very confident self-proclaimed fat athlete who knows she has nothing to prove to herself but there are people in her life who feel like she shouldn't be living her best life because she's fat. And on the other side, we have Ashish, who has always been a player. He's got lots of mojo, yes. you know, he thinks he's all that. We met him in When mm -hmm. Dimple Met Rishi. He's Rishi's little brother. And he has just been dumped by the only girl he has ever loved. And so he has lost his mojo completely. And so his parents, the Patels, who we all love, who people have asked about if they will run a dating service, <laughs> they set Ashish and Sweetie up on four contracted dates that they have to go out on and yeah Those the are some very fun dates going yeah. to the temple yeah what i've always wanted to do for my first date i mean it's so <laughs> romantic not <laughs> something i want to know this question just came to me i would like to know what your favorite part of writing this book and your least favorite part of writing this book was oh the favorite part is easy because the favorite part is disappearing into the world that i love yeah i mean when dimple met rishi that universe is so familiar and comfortable and happy and sparkling and hopeful i'm so glad it's a universe now. there's two books in there <laughs> i felt so happy it was like taking a mini vacation every day just going into my office and writing it that was my favorite part and you know getting to know the characters all of that stuff but my least favorite part is harder. I don't know if there was a least favorite part. If anything, I would say there's a part in the book where everything kind of goes wrong for these two characters. As there has to be in a book. Yes. Conflict. The dark moment. And I put them through their paces. Like, I was really mean mm -hmm. to them. And I felt really bad doing that because by that time, I really cared about them. You're one of the few authors. Most authors, like, take joy in making their characters this no. kind of pain. No, even in When Devil Met Rishi, at that dark moment, moment I was like sobbing because I was so yeah. upset with myself. Like, no, can it all be nice? I know, I can't yeah. do this. And actually that is one of the feedbacks I get in editing a lot is like, you're being too nice again. <laughs> Time to Make turn up the heat. hard. Yeah. <laughs> that was hard, yes, because I really do love Ashish and Sweetie so much. Before we get into some of the more deep, I guess, oh. questions, I uh -huh. want to do a few lighter questions just to ease us into this book. Sounds awesome. You posted a tweet about this on Twitter that was superlatives for readers because in this book, Sweetie uses superlatives to describe herself quite a few times, including sassy Sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, on that note, I wanted to make superlatives for each character of this book with you, and for Sweetie, it can't be sassy. Oh, so been okay, used. okay. Hmm, all right. So you help me out. What do you think for Ashish? Is it bad that the first thing that came to my mind was arrogant? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's fitting, arrogant Ashish. I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> and he would probably say awesome. Yeah, you know? he would say awesome. <laughs> yeah. Speaking to that point. All right, what about sweetie? So we can't do sassy, right? Do sassy. So how about splendiferous? <laughs> I feel a like word? that's a word she used to <laughs> yeah. describe herself. Splendiferous, sweetie. Yes. <laughs> I really want to do pinky. Okay. Well. Yay. I'm excited that you want to do pinky. Okay. I have an idea. You tell me. Proactive pinky. Oh, I love yes. it. Yes. yes. Very cool. Proactive. Yes. yes. And Oliver and Elijah, of course. Yes. Omniscient Oliver. He I mean, I guess all. he is wise in a sense. He is He's wise. the most sensitive yes. of the 
bunch. The bunch. That's mm -hmm. very true. Yes. Yeah. We could go basic and say extraordinary. Extraordinary Elijah. Who else do we have? Samir. Samir. Yes. Yeah. Man, so many S words. Yeah. What do you want to choose? Sensitive Samir. I like it. Mm -hmm. Sensitive fits him really well. Yes. Yeah. And now that that's done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that that's that, a project. <laughs> now that that project's over. Okay. I want to put you on the spot again. I want you to share your theme songs for <laughs> Sweetie, Ashish, and the yeah. book as a whole. What? <laughs> okay. Oh my god. All right. So Sweetie in the book talks about she likes This Is Me. I feel mm -hmm. like that and yeah. R-E-S-P-C-T. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Either of those well, that's, work. Those are perfect. All right? Yes. Help me out with Ashish's. What do you think? I feel like it has to be something like really contemporary right yes, now. Yes, exactly. I mean, I don't know if this works for him as a character, but I guess how he sees Sweetie Sunflower. Hmm, I don't know that one. It was on the Into the Spider-Verse soundtrack. It's by Post Malone. Oh, wow. I don't know that it describes him, but I think it describes how he sees Sweetie. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I feel like something that describes him would be like Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> and the theme of the book, somebody on Twitter tweeted me the song Sweetie by Carly Rae Jepsen. Oh, and I didn't it is know. very I poppy. I haven't listened to like the lyrics closely, okay. but the overall feel was super cute. Okay. So let's, let's, go, let's with go with that, that one. for now. Yes. And now you have Maybe. homework on what to listen to. <laughs> <I know. laughs> yes. And now, again, just to put you on the spot, one last time. All right, let's yes. do it. I can take it. We have to come up with Hogwarts houses. For the characters, and there's something about Sweetie, and then I want to do Dimple, Rishi, okay. Trinkle, and Sahil as well. Oh, awesome. Okay, okay. So, Sweetie, I feel like, is a Hufflepuff. Okay, I was going to say that. I would yeah. have gone to bat if right? I didn't right. come up with that. I, like, that's what yes. she's been in my head. What would you say Ashish is? I do think he's a Gryffindor. I do too. Yeah, that's what I have in my head. He had a few non-Gryffindor moments, but yeah. I think he still exudes Gryffindor. He's got that yeah. in him, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. So Dimple. Gryffindor. Gryffindor? Yeah. All right. Do you agree? I think Gryffindor. I polled readers at one of my events and everybody said Slytherin. So <laughs> I think she, she could is, have a Slytherin. She is eye. ambitious. I could see it. She looks just so brave and upfront. Yes. I know. That's yeah. why I thought Gryffindor. She's just so fiery. Yeah. So, okay. Rishi. Hufflepuff for him as well. I think Hufflepuff. Yeah. There's a theme going here. Yes. <laughs> I, I do like my Hufflepuffs. Yes. And then Twinkle. I won't tell you what I think. Yeah. But you tell me what you Now think. I'm scared. I'm scared mine no. is going to be the wrong answer. No, I've got two different answers. I feel like if we're talking about like ambition, I feel like Twinkle has some of that. Like Slytherin. We need some good Slytherins. Yeah, we yeah. do. For sure. And I also feel like Ravenclaw because... That was actually my first thought. Yeah. But then I started thinking about like her ambition. Those are the two be, answers I always get. She could be a hybrid. Ravenclaw, Slytherin mix. So yeah. And then Sile. Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff. Yes. I, I don't know. Am I writing Hufflepuff boys <laughs> for a reason? But I broke the mold with Ashish. With Ashish yes. so, but then, but then Sweetie. Sweetie is a yes, Hufflepuff. Yes. Have to have at least one. And now to get a little bit more into those intense questions. All right. Um, intensity. Okay. I like it. First of all, I do want to have a little bit of a conversation about Samir. I feel like okay. he was a very interesting character. I'm trying to think of the best way to do this without spoilers, but I think okay. that a lot of times in books, like the supporting characters, their primary goal is to support the main character. They do have yes. character traits. They do have stories of their own. I mean, we saw that with Oliver and Elijah in this yeah. book. But Samir really, I feel like, has his own character arc in a way. Yeah. And he has a very interesting one in, you know, how he's feeling and what he goes through. So I wanted to talk a bit about that. Okay. Man, Samir was one of those characters who was supposed to be a very minor character to start with. Yeah. Which, actually, Ashish was supposed to be in When Dippo Met Rishi. So are we getting a spinoff about Samir now? <laughs> so Samir was one of those characters who just happened to take on a bigger role mm -hmm. than I expected. When just I like first read him, like I definitely thought he was going to be just a supporting character that just showed up once in a while, kind right. of for comedic relief. Yeah. But then, he, but then he really made his way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He barreled his way into the book. Yes, yes, he did. He was just one of those characters who was meant to be backdrop, you know, just kind of to set off Ashish. And yeah. then he turned up to have this whole arc of his own, his own story, and it just went from there. Yeah, kind of building off of that, do you feel like some characters come more intentionally to you and some just flow naturally with the story? Yes, definitely. There are some characters who I have to plot out from the beginning mm -hmm. to the end. And then there are others who just dance onto the page and do whatever they want. <laughs> they, they make it their own. Yes, yes, exactly. You just have to follow along. And something I really want to talk about, which again, you talked about during the event, and I think that's been one of the main focal points of this book, are just the fat acceptance themes and the body positivity themes. And you know, this is kind of a free-for-all. I don't have anything specific I want to touch on, but I just think that it's 
so important you know and you mentioned some of this again during the event and you have in the process of writing this book there are books like Dumplin that have come out that have definitely paved the way for this but right. you know there are nowhere near enough especially with the current mentality of our society because I feel like even in my life people who are supportive of movements to I don't know end racism or end right. homophobia are so there for that but that doesn't always get extended to fat phobia right and yeah so I think it's something really important especially showing it in the light of a woman of color because there are cultural nuances to that right so yeah I think it's something to definitely you. talk about thank yeah. you it's just so ingrained in our yeah. society to be fat phobic that just in everyday you know conversation mm -hmm. you'll probably come across like 10 or 15 different yeah. fat phobic jokes mm -hmm. or comments that aren't even maybe intended that way or they yeah. don't think deeply about it mm -hmm. but they'll say things like oh I feel so fat mm -hmm. today or something you know and it's like let's not do that let's start to examine a little bit more about what we're saying and be more intentional with our words yeah i just remember i heard a comment a few days ago where someone in my class was like oh i look fat in that picture and i was like why is that a bad thing right why, yeah why, why right. does that matter yeah, yeah exactly do we yeah. do we ever look at it and say oh i you know i look proud in that picture or i look yeah, yeah. I look brown in that picture like, <laughs> i look so brown in that picture what a shocker yeah yeah i know it doesn't carry the same connotation as yeah. i look so fat Mm -hmm, yeah. Definitely. I think this is something you touched on briefly at the beginning of this book that I think Sweetie talks about this. She says that people say, oh, I'm just concerned for your health. And this does occasionally happen with very thin people, but not to the same extreme. No. Nowhere near right. the same extreme. Right. And also, my question is, is it really your business? Right, mm -hmm. exactly. I feel yeah. like people use that as an excuse when they're confronted on their fat phobia. Mm -hmm. Their immediate thing is, but I'm just concerned about your health. Yeah. Well, is that your place? Are you mm -hmm. this person's like loved mm -hmm. one or close personal friend? And are you their doctor? Are you their doctor? <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's really strange that people feel like they have the right to comment mm -hmm. on someone else's body. Yeah. And I think you really explore that in this book. And again, something you talked about earlier was the impact her mom had on her and that her mom really didn't think she was doing anything wrong. She thought that she truly was being concerned for her daughter. And I think that that's where you see the cycle of this because her mom was raised to believe something. So she's instilling that on Sweetie because she genuinely thinks that right. her being fat is the worst thing for her right. and sweetie is like no i am happy the way i am now i'm not right. working towards happiness i've already achieved it exactly mm -hmm. yeah that's so true sweetie just says you know i have it all already and i have yeah. it while being a fat girl and yeah. there it is like take it or leave it you know how was that exploring that you know did you have to take breaks while writing because i know that's that's a rough yeah. topic to get through and how did you balance the part where her mother said her piece but then sweetie responded in her way with her positivity right so how did you balance that it was definitely challenging at times where i was like oh god it's so hard i don't want to yeah. do this i don't want to write this it's sad but I knew that it would have a hopeful and happy mm -hmm. ending and so I wanted to keep going because I knew I could get Sweetie through the rough patches to the happily ever after and I just wanted to get through it and honestly like I did that thing where Sweetie was just already so confident she didn't yeah. have an arc she was just like whatever mom I don't care what you say and my editor <laughs> was like that's not as satisfying as yeah, if I she had to work for it let's, let's not do that yeah. yeah I just wanted Sweetie to like just be able to just feel like fine even though her mom said these things and that's obviously not how you write a book so <laughs> yeah. I did have to go back and edit yeah. and fix that and can you talk about the impact of Anjali in that Anjali is Sweetie's cousin who is also a happy fat woman who is accomplished surgeon she's married to a man she loves right. so you were talking about how a lot of times these characters exist in a void right. where they're like I'm the only fat one but yeah that's not how it works no that's not how it works at all and I think yeah. fat people are allowed to have fat friends and fat mm -hmm. role models and you yeah. know surround themselves with other people who are fat and who are comfortable and happy and confident yeah. being fat and that was really important for me to show on the page for her to have someone to bounce these things off of and i want to talk about just the indianness and i think that's something that's mm -hmm. so prevalent in all of your work i mean it's i think part of the reason why when dimple met rishi really hit so many readers right there you know indian readers and just you know asian readers readers who don't come from the majority you know that was there in Sweetie's book too and I really like how you explore this arc where you generally have 
one character who's really confident in their Indianness, and in this case it was Sweetie, right. and then one who's a little bit more struggling with it, in this case it was Ashish, which was especially interesting to me because in When Temple Met Rishi, it was reversed. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly, yeah. And I wanted to show that like Ashish, even coming from the same family as Rishi, <laughs> he didn't have the same experiences yeah. growing up, you know, he's a different person, and how he internalized all the messages was completely different from what yeah. we saw in Rishi. And Sweetie, she is just very comfortable in her culture, and she doesn't doesn't see it as something to struggle with. And I think it's important to show both kinds of teens, you know, yeah. like, because some people don't struggle. They're like, yeah, I'm Indian American and I'm cool with it, you know, and then there are some who are like, what does it mean to be yes. Indian American? <laughs> who am I? <laughs> who what am is the I? meaning of life? Yes, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Um, and both are valid. <laughs> I just really like how, I guess, nonchalantly, or I don't know if it's nonchalant when you're writing it, <laughs> yeah. but when reading it, it feels that you really incorporate the Indianness in a very nonchalant way. You know, you have their parents casually speaking their mother tongues in this case it was Hindi and Malayalam I believe. yes yes mm -hmm. and then you have you know Bollywood movie references Hindi song references yeah and it's not yes. anything out of the ordinary right and that's really interesting for me because I think growing up as an Indian American it always felt out of the ordinary right. so to see it in that light kind of challenges my belief system too it challenges that and makes me see that why do I treat Hindi songs any differently than I treat English songs there's, right. there's no reason to yeah. So, yeah. yeah even with Ashish a character who does kind of struggle more with his identity he still has those same conversations right. with Sweetie and I think that shows that like when you are someone who struggles sometimes seeing someone who has had a similar experience to you you kind of have an immediate same ground with them I know I had that when I met like my first friend who was also Thummel like immediately I just felt this instant connection and I think that was something showcased really well in this book oh thank you mm -hmm. that means a yes. lot to me thank you and something else I wanted to touch on was the sibling bond between Ashish and Rishi uh -huh. you know we got a glimpse of that <laughs> yeah. in when Dimple met Rishi but I think in this book you really see how Ashish kind of feels inferior at times to his brother chat about it <laughs> Oh, discuss. Yes, discuss. <laughs> Speak. <laughs> yeah, so I think that that was kind of the behind the scenes thing. Like if you just see Ashish and Rishi, you see like a super confident mm -hmm. younger brother who's always like the yeah. basketball star and all of this. He has all the girls falling after him. And that's from Rishi's perspective, right? But from Ashish's mm -hmm. perspective, there's a lot more going on under the surface. There's vulnerability. There's yeah. the feeling like Rishi's always been the golden child and you know I don't really belong in this family and I think it's important to show that even when people look so perfect on the outside there's yeah. oftentimes a whole other story on the inside you know and it's kind of the same way in the other dynamic where Ashish continuously sees Rishi as the golden child but in One Diplomat Rishi you see that Rishi has his own right. struggles he's going through and I think that kind of plays into some ideas especially in our society where we look at people's like Instagram and we're like oh right. their life is perfect and it's like no that's the persona they're putting on but you don't yeah. know the inside and that's something Sweetie actually talks about right. multiple times in this book she says you don't know what's going through their minds she right. really tries to see the good in people yeah yeah for sure and like when she sees Ashish's picture at first she says yeah. he looks sad there's something about him that just looks sad to me yeah I think this is something you explore really a lot in From Jinkle with the Love but you also touch on it in Sweetie and Dimple stories the class yeah. discrepancies yes mm -hmm. yeah so so I just think that's important to talk about, like especially with teens who are being raised in Atherton, which is very <laughs> yes. affluent. Like you can't write a book about Atherton and not talk about, you know, some of the class differences yeah. that you might notice. And it's something that's very prevalent, I think, in a lot of teens' lives. It's yeah. just being around peers who are from different socioeconomic, mm -hmm. you know, statuses and like how do you make sense of that and what do you think of I think yeah. it's just very interesting to put in a book. Yeah, now I wanna talk about another thing that is in all of your books so far okay um, so they're all you know light-hearted some are rom-coms yes and you've talked about how you do that because I think you mentioned this in the last interview we had you said how you feel like there's this pressure for marginalized characters or writers to always write issue books yes and whereas those are important so is the love and the light yes, and the magic exactly <laughs> but even with that in each book I mean you challenge multiple things but I feel like each book also has its kind of own focus when diplomat Rishi is a lot about women in STEM and kind of like racism and internalized racism and rich white boys being stupid. Yeah. <laughs> um, Chinko with Love really focuses on the kind of class yes. discrepancies and coming from an immigrant family. Yep. And there's something about Sweetie is really about fat phobia. So what's it like to balance that? To balance, you know, I'm writing a summer rom-com, but I'm also having these moving themes. And do you feel like that's something that just comes to your character because your characters are from these backgrounds that you can't avoid it? 
Right, so I think with characters who live a marginalized identity anyway, it's really hard to separate the story from, you know, yeah. their marginalized identity and things that they would face on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Like, you can't write a really honest, authentic story without diving into that at least a little bit. But because it's a rom-com and it's a summer rom-com, it's a happy place, you can dive into it a little bit at a time and then mm -hmm. still have it all work out in the end without going to, like, yeah. a really dark place. Place, right? Yeah. <laughs> so and that's I what that's, I like. I think that's really nice because that's like the actuality of day to day life. Not that issue books aren't, I think right. they are very important. Okay. But I think that also there's something about the fact that it's day to day life. Your day to day life isn't always the big things that happen. Right. It's just, you know, the little things, but then there are also good days when right. you're just having fun. And I think that is authentic, that is real. Right. You know? yeah, yeah, definitely. And <laughs> I think that the big thing about like this push for diversity in the book world or in media in general isn't to have have specifically issue stories but just to have all kinds of stories for all kinds of people so to have these lighthearted stories and these issue stories mm -hmm. for you know all people just to have equal access to every story not just one or the other right exactly mm -hmm. exactly we all deserve to see ourselves in all kinds mm -hmm. of stories exactly. yeah and now I want to play a game we've ended on I think a strong note yes I want to play Let's a fun it. game okay it's a lightning round Ooh. yes so I'm just gonna okay. say two words and you just have to say the first okay that comes to your mind and this is actually inspired by there's something about sweetie because they do play that game yes in the book <laughs> they so do cancer or plotter plotter daylight or nighttime daylight gryffindor or slytherin gryffindor coffee or tea tea sadly used to be coffee i can't drink caffeine anymore dc or marvel dc spring or fall spring harry potter or to all the boys i've loved before how to choose to all the boys. Contemporary or fantasy? Contemporary. Rung de Basanti or Kalhonaho? Kalhonaho. Dimple or sweetie? You can't make me choose between my own children. <laughs> I was gonna try to trick you, just go <laughs> through them really fast. So you're just like <laughs> saying one. Oh man, I cannot choose. I refuse. This no, I can't do it. You choose which one? Sweetie. <laughs> that was I, easier no, than I it's thought. Not, it's not easy. <laughs> Hear me out. Okay. I feel like Dimple is the person I am, uh -huh. but Sweetie is the person I want to be. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. I actually wrote that in my review. I was like, that's everyone amazing. should be Sweetie. That's so Because she just sees the good in everyone. And you know, Dimple is very passionate, yes. but also she would slap someone. <laughs> and I feel like maybe that's not the realm to go to. Or that's not how to resolve your conflicts. That's not how to resolve your conflicts. <laughs> but I am Dimple. I really could relate mm. really strong to her, but I just feel like Sweetie's like, just like this really inspirational figure oh, that like, we're all like, <laughs> aspire to be. Yeah. yeah. Those are all the questions I had Yay, for Sunday. Thank great. you for being here on my channel today. I feel like I shouldn't have to rave about these books anymore because that's half of what my brand is. <laughs> but I'll take the opportunity to. You guys definitely should be reading these books. They're just, they're so good. Right. You know, it's May right now, so it's the perfect time to pick up summer rom-com. It's very summery. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And I think that these books are perfect for that. And you don't have to read one to read them all, but you should read them all. Yes. Thank you mm -hmm. for having yes, me. I feel like this has become a tradition. Mm -hmm to like yeah. chat with you so i will leave links to where you can follow sandhya and where you can get the books thank you all so much for watching i hope you're having a lovely day or night wherever you are please remember that you're beautiful and you deserve the world and i will see you soon for a brand new video goodbye